Lord be with you. Welcome to worship with Trinity Reformed Church. We are a community God gathers, transforms, and sends to share Christ's expansive love with the world. If you are new to Trinity this morning, we invite you to scan the QR code in your order of worship so that you can share a little of your contact information with us and we can share with you what's happening in our life together. We do have a few announcements this morning before we begin our time of worship. The first is that Together West Michigan is asking folks to fill out a child care voter pledge card. There will be physical cards that you can fill out in the gathering space after worship, or there's a link to an online form in our weekly resources. Filling out that form means you are committing to vote on August 6th in favor of the Ready by Five millage that we've been talking a lot about. Also, it means committing to hold candidates accountable for taking action on affordable, quality child care. So again, there will be cards you can fill out after worship in the gathering space, or you can find a link online at our weekly resources. Also, a heads up that next Sunday is our final Sunday of the year for second hour for all ages. Adults, Reverend Ricardo Tavares will be joining us to share about the work of New City Neighbors Community Farms, so mark your calendars for that. Now, as we come to God in worship, I invite you to turn in your red hymnals to number 102, and we will sing together, Arise, Your Light is Come. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as God calls us to worship. The God of healing, hope, and life is in our midst. All creation is being made new. The suffering servant becomes the source of healing. The stone that was rejected becomes the cornerstone of hope. The one who was crucified is raised to new life. The God of healing, hope, and life is in our midst. Let us worship our God together. Let us continue to worship our God, singing number 593 in our red hymnals, Lord Most High. Heights of the heavens, the heights 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was and is and will come again, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated. When we come into the presence of our holy God, we cannot help but notice those ways we have failed to live in the image of our holy God. But trusting in the steadfast love of God, we confess our sins together. God of healing, hope, and life, we confess our failure to live as people of the resurrection. We want to make every thought captive to you, but too often we bow down before idols of our own making. We are ruled by our fears, or our passions, and our minds are not fixed on the things above. We want to proclaim Christ is risen, but too often we wait to share the good news until we are in the safe haven of your church and fail to bear witness to you in the world. We want to be a people who are known as Christians by our love. But too often, we fail to love our neighbors as ourselves. God of healing, hope, and life, we confess our unfaithfulness to you in thought, word, and deed. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Having confessed our sin, hear this good news. We seek God's grace with boldness because we trust in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who loves us and has laid down his life for us. This is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Believe this good news and live in its peace. And may the peace of Christ be with you. Let's share Christ's peace together. Just a note for our youngest worshipers, we're going to head back to our seats after we pass the peace. We'll come forward later.
Hear these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Baptism is the sign and seal of God's promises to this covenant people. In baptism, God promises by grace alone to forgive our sins, to adopt us into the body of Christ, the church, to send the Holy Spirit daily to renew and cleanse us, and to resurrect us to eternal life. This promise is made visible in the waters of baptism. Water cleanses, purifies, refreshes, sustains. Jesus Christ is the living water. Through baptism, Christ calls us to new obedience, to love and trust God completely, to forsake the evil in the world, and to live a new and holy life. Yet when we fall into sin, we must not despair of God's mercy, nor continue in sin. For baptism is the sign and seal of God's eternal covenant of grace with us. I'd like to invite our baptism participants to come forward at this time. The elders of Trinity Reformed Church have welcomed Alex and Hannah Saxton, who come before us to present their daughter, Mia Eleanor Saxton, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Beloved of God, I ask you before God and Christ's church to reject evil, to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce sin? and the power of evil in your life and in the world. Who is your Lord and Savior? Will you be a faithful member of this congregation and through worship and service seek to advance God's purposes here and throughout the world? Do you promise to instruct this child in the truth of God's word? in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, to pray for her, to teach her to pray, and to train her in Christ's way by your example through worship and in the nurture of the church. Congregation, will you please rise for your baptismal vows? Do you promise to love, encourage, and support this sister by teaching the gospel of God's love by being an example of Christian faith and character, and by giving the strong support of God's family in fellowship, prayer, and service? If so, please answer, we do. We do. Let us join together now and confess what we believe and what we will teach this little one using the words of the Apostles' Creed. You can find them in your red hymnals on page 783, and we'll be using version C. Friends, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray together. We give you thanks, O holy and gracious God, for the gift of water. In the beginning of creation, your spirit moved over the waters. In the waters of the flood, you destroyed evil. You led the children of Israel through the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the river Jordan, John baptized our Lord, and your spirit anointed him. By his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ, the living water, forgives us, frees us from sin and death, and opens the way to life everlasting. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of baptism. In this water, you confirm to us that we are buried with Christ in his death, raised to share in Christ's resurrection, and are being renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pour out on us your spirit so that those here baptized may be washed clean and receive new life. To you be all honor and glory, dominion and power, now and forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. Mia Eleanor, for you, Jesus Christ came into the world. For you, Christ died. For you, Christ conquered death. All this Christ did for you, little one, though you know nothing of it yet. We love because God first loved us. Mia Eleanor, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Child of the covenant, in baptism, we are sealed by the Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the only King and Head of the Church, this child is now received into the visible membership of the Holy Catholic Church, engaged to confess Christ and to be God's faithful servant now and forever. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you cleanse and renew this child through your grace alone. Bless and strengthen her daily with the gift of your Spirit. Unfold to her the riches of your love deepening her faith, keeping her from the power of evil, and enabling her to live a holy and blameless life until your reign has fully come. Look with kindness upon her parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gifts that you have given them. Grant them the presence of your spirit that they may bring up this child to know you, to love you, and to serve you. Amen. Congregation, will you join your voices and welcome our new sibling in Christ? Joyfully, we receive you into the body of Christ. Join with us as we give witness in the world to the good news, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Alleluia. Invite you now to rise in body or spirit for our song of welcome. It's number 234 in your green hymnals, Come to the Water.
to be seated and I'll invite the children to come forward for our prayer. Are we ready to pray? Let's pray. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God If you are going upstairs to worship in the worship centers, then you can follow Miss Amanda. And if you are remaining here in the sanctuary, you can turn in your red hymnal to number 652, and we will sing together, I Lift My Eyes Up. Our first reading today comes from the Gospel according to John, 
We'll read John 10, verses 11 through 18. That begins on page 872 in our Sanctuary Bibles. Listen for the word of God. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And our second reading continues our journey through Acts. We'll read Acts 4, verses 1 through 12 today. It's page 887 in our Sanctuary Bibles. Listen for the word of God. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came to them, much annoyed, because they were teaching the people and proclaiming that in Jesus there is the resurrection of the dead. So they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and they numbered about 5,000. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Growing up on a cash crop farm, April was always a time of stones and seeds. Every April, as soon as the fields were dry, we rushed to pick the stones that had emerged from the soil during the freeze-thaw cycles of winter. Our Wisconsin fields were mostly strewn with limestones. We would lift these unwanted, dull, tan stones onto a wagon, drive to a stone pile, and then toss them onto the growing mound of rejects. The work of stone picking made the fields ready for planting. We made more room for seeds and a safer surface for the planting equipment. Being too young and small to help fill the planter, I watched my dad open 50-pound bags containing 80,000 seeds. He poured each bag into a bin on the planter, 
and then use that planter to sow the seeds a couple of inches under the soil. The miracle of summer was watching those seeds transform barren-seeming fields into lush acres of corn or soybeans, culminating in a harvest of exponential wonder. And it all started with stones and seeds. At Trinity, this Eastertide, we are exploring the book of Acts to see what Jesus and Jesus' followers do after the resurrection. Last Sunday, we saw the miracle of Peter and John healing a person in Jesus' name at the beautiful gate in the temple. This Sunday, we see the temple leaders deciding this good deed is not a, a seed to nurture, but a stone to throw away. These temple leaders react a bit like farm children hearing that it is time once again to go pick stones. They are much annoyed. Didn't they just have this same conflict with Jesus a few weeks ago? Where do these stones keep coming from? The temple leaders don't take repetition as an opportunity to learn. Instead, they once again treat a manifestation of God's healing presence as a threat to their authority. They're not wrong to sense a conflict. Jesus announced that God's reign had come near. Jesus formed a group of followers to be a renewed Israel while claiming that his own body was the new temple. Now the followers of this new temple are meeting in the old temple and proclaiming that the same person the temple leaders rejected has now been raised from the dead. The stone they'd thrown out is back it's multiplying and once again threatening to upend the social, political, and economic structures they're working to stay on top of. To keep things the same, the temple leaders arrest Peter and John and throw them out of the house of God. They say, we are the insiders. You are the outsiders. We've got the truth. You don't. We reject you and your so-called experience of the so-called resurrection. Happily, our reading ends with the temple leader's claim of exclusive authority completely uprooted by the resurrection. God lifts Jesus off the stone pile of rejects and reveals Jesus to be the cornerstone. The cornerstone not just of the temple, but of all creation. Perhaps the first readers of Acts could simply celebrate this amazing reversal. Those first Christ followers were a, a part of a small movement within Judaism. They wanted to be recognized as the legitimate fulfillment of God's promises to the Jewish people. They wanted their presence to be validated, even celebrated by people just like them. They weren't looking to keep people out. They wanted to build a new temple where they would be welcomed inside. Here at Trinity, some 2,000 years later, the story has grown more complicated. We too celebrate Christ as the cornerstone, but many of us are more ambivalent about what later Christ followers have built on that foundation. Having grown in status and power over the centuries, Leaders in the church have gone from being rejected to rejecting others. People in the church have disparaged Jewish people, other religions, atheists. People in the church have excluded others from leadership based on race or gender or sexual orientation. Some Christians now say, we're the insiders, you're the outsiders. We've got the truth they don't. We reject anyone else's experience of the divine that doesn't fit into our box of doctrine. The church at times has been as rigid and self-serving as the leaders in the temple who rejected Jesus. At Trinity, we have a growing awareness of the ways the church has at times grown bad fruit. So we strive to be sensitive to other people and other traditions. 
We see much that is good and beautiful in other religions of the world. We value the intelligence and integrity of people who consider themselves to be atheists or agnostics. We seek to see all our fellow human beings as seeds striving to grow toward the light. We're growing as an inclusive group here at Trinity. For many of us, the challenge in this morning's reading is not to respect different faiths and traditions. We do. The challenge for us is to embrace the exclusivity and particularity of following Christ, the cornerstone. What does it mean for us to follow the only one in whom there is salvation? We may be more comfortable with inclusive stands for lofty ideals like love, justice, tolerance. But Richard Rohr points out, we can't really love universals. It's hard to love concepts, forces, or ideas. Ideology is just our ego wrapping itself around such abstractions. Ideology is a way to worship ourselves. Instead of clinging to ideology, we're invited to wrestle with a God who makes a physical universe and takes on the particular flesh of a human body. We're invited to wrestle with the exclusivity of a Christ who is the only salvation available for us or anyone. We're invited to wrestle with the love of Christ which compels us to trust that God's love is always bigger than any organized religion. Christ is somehow exclusively the way and inclusively for all. Christ is somehow cosmic, upholding the entire universe and incarnate in time and place as the living word. Christ is is our cornerstone. Modern cornerstones are placed somewhere near the corner of a building. They, can, they only serve a decorative function now. They usually have the year of completion engraved on them. Sometimes they even contain a few time capsule trinkets. But as more buildings today are made of glass and steel, cornerstones are fading as a tradition. In ancient times, cornerstones were much more than decorative markers. Cornerstones were carefully placed in the actual corner of a building and lined up with the cardinal directions. They were the first stone to be placed in the foundation. All other stones were set in reference to the cornerstone. So the cornerstone determined the position of the entire structure. In ancient times, cornerstones were so important, they took on symbolic meaning too. Cornerstones symbolized seeds. Seeds from which buildings would germinate and rise. Builders would actually sprinkle water and the blood from animal sacrifices on the cornerstone to nurture the building's growth. This tradition lives on today with Freemasons who still pour corn, oil, and wine on a cornerstone when it's dedicated. They nourish the cornerstone because the cornerstone is also a seed. Christ is the cornerstone. Christ is the seed. The bold claim of Christ followers is that all things in heaven and on earth, all things visible and invisible, were made in Christ. Christ is the source, the seed of everything. When we look at other people and religions and traditions in the world, we can recognize that Christ is already there. Christ is the seed of all that is good in them too. Now, people of other traditions are not going to see it that way. Our friends and family who are committed atheists may not welcome our read of reality. 
And we don't have to demand that people agree with us or recognize the presence of Christ we see in them. We can respect people where they're at. We can learn from the wisdom of their tradition. We can be open to the insights of their experience, even as we trust that Christ, the cornerstone, is the foundation of their existence too. Now, some of us may still be unsettled by how exclusive or even arrogant the claim of Christ as cornerstone will sound to others. I don't know a way around that. But maybe us being unsettled is a good thing. Maybe it's a sign that the revelation of Christ as cornerstone is not something we came up with to fit our ideology. Christ as cornerstone is revealed through the resurrection, and the resurrection is inherently unsettling. Christ's resurrection promises to upend the status, power, and money of rigid or corrupt church leaders. Christ's resurrection promises to lift up people who have been rejected or thrown out. Christ's resurrection promises the last will be first, the poor will be fed, the sick will be healed, and all of creation will be made new and flourish like never before. Christ is the seed that grows all into new life. So then how do we go about following Christ, and living the resurrection today. We can start by joining Mia and humbly living out our baptisms. We all participate in Mia's baptism today, but we did not make her a child of God. In baptism, we celebrate that Mia was already created and claimed by God. The water in the font made visible the invisible promise of God's grace. In our tradition, we take great comfort in knowing we choose God because God first chooses us. We love others because God first loves us. Christ, the cornerstone, is already the foundation of everything. Richard Rohr says, The universe is christened from its very beginning. Our work as people chosen in Christ is not to reject others. Our work is to let others know in a way they will appreciate God has chosen them too. We are invited to see the good in others that is at the very foundation of their existence. Growing up, I thought limestones were the dullest rocks imaginable. They have none of the sparkle of granite, none of the veining of marble. Well, one day out in the field, I looked closer at one of those limestones, and I saw a little fossil in that ordinary field stone. It turns out limestones are full of life. They're made of it. They were formed from coral and seashells millions of years ago. Today, limestones raise a soil's pH, helping enhance nutrition. These stones are still not great for farm equipment, but their presence actually helps plants flourish. In their own way, they are a seed of life too. In this world, we need each other in surprising ways. God has chosen us, and God has chosen all. We don't all have to be the same to help life flourish. And we can go forward in the hope that even the stoniest person is already seated with new life. So may we trust that Christ is the cornerstone of creation and the seed of new life. May we be unsettled by a resurrection that is reshaping the current structures and of power and status. And may we be refreshed as we work with God
toward God's new creation of exponential wonders. Let's pray. Good God, we give you thanks for the gift of your word and your spirit, for the gift of these spring days where we see many stones and many seeds. Thank you for letting us participate in your work of bringing about new life. We ask that you start that work in us and help us to humbly and boldly share your love with the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Our song of response is number 682 in our red hymnals. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing verses 1 and 3 of Before the Throne of God. I invite you to be seated. Our great prayer of thanksgiving this morning is found on the yellow worship inserts in your hymnals. If this is your first time celebrating communion with us, we invite you to follow those around you as we come forward to receive the elements together. If you wish to remain in your seat, just raise a hand and a server will bring communion to you where you are. Please know that all who seek to follow Christ are welcome here at Christ's table. Let us pray together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Thanks and praise fill our hearts, Almighty God. For you are the author of creation and new creation, of covenant and new covenant. You spoke creation into being through your word and sustain it by your grace. You brought Jesus Christ through the darkness of the grave to the glory of resurrection light. And you claim us as your children, uniting us in Christ and inviting us to live the resurrection every day. And so we gladly thank you with your creatures on earth and all the company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending praise. Thank you. 
gladness are our song, redeeming God. For in your victory over death, we see the destiny of every hope in you. Come among us in the power of your spirit, that this bread and cup may be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread. And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup. Saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Hope and glory are our breath, merciful God. For you have rolled away the stone of death and promised to bring us through the tomb. Send forth your spirit to renew the face of the earth. Open your hand and fill creation with good things. Shape your church to live as your risen body until you come again in glory and make heaven and earth one. Christ's body was broken for us. Christ Christ is the the bread bread of life. Christ's blood was shed for our forgiveness. Christ Christ is the cup of our salvation. These are the gifts of God for For all of creation. Come, for all things are now ready.
Let us pray together. Gracious God, thank you for making your name known at this table, proclaiming your good news in bread broken and juice poured out. Here we experience salvation in your name, through your spirit and through one another. We give back to you our offerings, our money, our time, our attention. We ask that you would use these gifts to make your salvation known to others. May your salvation be known in every person and every place. Make all your creatures know your power and goodness so that we might work together for good in your name. We pray for your church in every place. Gather us together and make us one, one in ministry and mission to the world, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the nations of the world, especially for those who live in places where fear and violence seem to reign, for the people of Ukraine and Russia, for the people of Palestine and Israel, for the people of Syria, Somalia, Haiti, and so many places around the world. Anoint your leaders with wisdom, we pray, so that they might use their power to help the poor and defend the vulnerable. In Jesus' name. We pray for those we love who are in need of your healing this day. For those on a long journey toward recovery. For those battling illness. For those awaiting answers, for those mourning difficult diagnoses, for those approaching the end of this life, comfort all who are suffering, walk with them through dark valleys, and restore them in body, mind, and soul, in Jesus' name. We pray for your creation. We thank you for the wide seas and the blessed sun for the everlasting hills and the never-ending winds, for the myriad creatures that fill the earth. We give thanks for all those who gathered to clean up the west side yesterday. May our efforts be a reflection of our ongoing care for all you have made. Grant us the wisdom to care for the earth and keep it in Jesus' name. Loving God, you have made your salvation known. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, receive now these prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to rise in body or in spirit for our song of sending. It's number 941 in our red hymnals, Song of Hope. Working for 
invite you to raise your arms as a sign of our unity in Christ. As we go from this place uh, to a world already seated with Christ's love, we go with God's blessing. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen.